Well, with the 22 million rand flag fail still in the public discourse, Arts and Culture Minister Natiem Tetwa is once again being slammed, this time over apparent plans to rename the Tal Monument. The Democratic Alliance wants the minister to reconsider, saying that while inclusivity is crucial, it's also important not to lose the identities of smaller languages. For more on this, I'm joined by DAMP, Leon Schreiber. Leon, thanks for your time. We appreciate it. So we are trying to establish exactly where this comment was made and in which context. So first, if you can confirm that for us before telling us why you're so opposed to it. Uh, good evening, Sean. Good evening to the viewers. Yes, so I can confirm that this comment was made uh, on the 10th of March, uh, or this request uh, by the minister at a meeting where the heads of all museums and, and monuments reporting to his department were present. Uh, we know this because of uh, Mr. Heinrich Weingart from the Cape Forum, who actually broke the, no the, broke the news last week. And uh, the implication is that uh, the only period for public consultation is this coming Saturday. So thank goodness we found out about this. Uh, and now uh, we are scrambling a bit uh, to make sure that we get our voice uh, heard as part of the opposition to this proposal. Okay, tell us more about your opinion on this being scrapped. So, you know, Shahan, the, the, the Constitution and, and, the, and the motto of South Africa is, is unity in diversity. It's not unity uh, in, uh, in uh, our all being the same, essentially. And I think that this really is now a, a turning point where the ANC government, Minister Natim Tetwa, are really showing something that goes far beyond uh, the crucial drive towards uh, inclusivity and, and, and diversity. What, what you're dealing with here now is a monument which, ironically, if the minister knew anything about it, uh, its entire symbolism is built around showcasing the different languages from Africa and across the world that influenced uh, the shaping of, of Afrikaans, which is a really unique language in the global context. Uh, and the monument itself uh, signals uh, how the language is a bridge between uh, all of these different cultures and groups. And of course, in the Western Cape, especially, it is the majority language of the province. The majority of speakers of Afrikaans are not white South Africans. And so it really is a language that in many ways embodies diversity. And the idea that you can simply change the name or remove Afrikaans from the name of the language monument would actually render the monument itself meaningless. It would be a pile of bricks because its entire uh, existence, its entire symbolism is uh, to honor Afrikaans, not to the exclusion of any other language. In fact, celebrating the diverse influences on, on Afrikaans. Yeah, as you said, it was built in 1975 to actually honor the Afrikaans language. There are many South Africans who would obviously disagree with your position on this. Uh, some argue that it's the language of the oppressor. Why don't we have other uh, uh, official languages in this country, you know, honored in such a way? So there's no need for the Tal monument right now. What do you say to that? So the answer to that is to, as, as, you, as you point out in the question, make sure that we elevate South Africa's other indigenous languages. And the solution then surely is not to tear down, almost in a physical sense, the meaning of the Afrikaans language monument in Paul, but to make sure that we actually elevate other indigenous languages that were discriminated against in the past. And so at the end of the day, the question really is whether the kind of money and resources being put into this kind of thing is actually helping to celebrate and broaden diversity or whether it seeks to narrow and, and break down that kind of diversity. Now, we know Minister Mtetwa, uh, with the flagpole issue that you mentioned, uh, is one who, who is taken to these kind of uh, cheap theatrics rather than doing the kind of really hard work which his department should be doing to make sure that other, mon uh, other languages are elevated. But I think something that most South Africans could agree on, whether they are Afrikaans speaking or not, is that once you start actually stripping historical monuments uh, or, or sites of their meaning, saying uh, that uh, sites should not have any kind of specific meaning, then you really run into a situation where you say, well, could the um, uh, monuments to, uh, in, in KwaZulu-Natal, for example, reflecting on the, on the law, uh, centuries of conflict in that province, should they not exist to honor that specific context and environment? And I think that's a real slippery slope to, to go down if diversity is something that is important to you.
Yeah, um, especially in a country when we're talking so much about the issue of racism. Lastly, if you could tell us, because money is always an issue when it comes to things like this, the 22 million rand proposed flag, the most ridiculous thing we've heard about in months. Um, do you know what it costs to actually maintain the Tal Monument? I'm not uh, aware exactly of the budgetary implications, but like I said, we, there is a public meeting on Saturday that I will be attending along with many DA colleagues uh, from this region to go and actually find out the exact details of what's going on here to make sure that we voice our opposition. Uh, you mentioned, I think in the introduction, the, the, the provincial minister of cultural affairs who's also come out very strongly against this, Ms. Anil Mare. And so we will be uh, following up on this kind of information and making sure that we actually uh, speak out. But the point is that if South Africa does not uh, find space to celebrate the differences, the diversity uh, within our society in a positive and inclusive and constructive way, as the Tal Monument really does, Sean, I can really encourage viewers to visit this unique museum and monument because it is, it is really a, an inspiring experience. And so I think what the minister should do is take some of the 22 million that he was going to blow on the flagpole, get himself a flight ticket down to Paul, visit the language monument and see what it actually symbolizes and how it is used today to bring people together and, uh, and, and the diverse speakers of Afrikaans together in celebrating uh, this unique language. I'm very interested to see how this uh, monument actually is inspiring. Uh, but maybe I'm looking at it from a totally different light. But thank you so much for your time. DAMP Leon Schreiber.